Created by independent game developer Hello Games, No Man's Sky was launched with the promise of a deep space exploration game in a procedurally generated galaxy. It was a universe of 18 quintillion planets with countless life forms and planets ready to be explored. Unfortunately, what was expected to be 2016's Game of the Year barely made Game of the Week when it launched. Since then, the game has gone through numerous patches and updates to try and deliver what the game should have been when it launched. Hey everyone, I'm Alpha Lance with the Leaderboard, and today we're here to look at all the changes that No Man's Sky has gone through over the last two years. Since the launch of No Man's Sky in 2016, it's gone through four major updates and countless patches to keep improving its gameplay quality. The updates entitled Foundation, Pathfinder, Atlas Rises, and Next have only made the game bigger and better compared to when it was first released. Graphics in the latest update next, Hello Games has taken its visuals to a whole new level with better attention to detail, effects, and lighting. In its initial launch, the overall sameness of each planet got really old quickly. The biomes lacked richness and depth, and it became a chore to walk around what looks like the same planet for endless hours, that is, if players managed to invest hours into the game. Many early adopters were uninspired to explore. The update has created a much more vibrant and diverse planetary exploration experience that teams with life and character. The terrain generates faster and ground, water, and cloud textures have been upgraded. This attention to detail, while small, goes a long way in adding depth into the once flat and ringless planets. Even the flora and fauna of each planet has gotten a much needed revamp. The creatures, while still odd and terrifying at times, now have a variety of responses and personalities for you to discover. All of this just adds to a totally rich ecosystem which makes planetary exploration feel worthwhile. While the look of the galaxy itself has changed, the way you look at the galaxy is also different. Next introduced the option to use a third person camera while exploring the cosmos. Now I'm a first person guy personally, but the beauty of No Man's Sky is truly wasted in the perspective. This third person camera gives you a sense of scale and reminds you of how small you are in the vastness of the universe. And now that you can customize your character, you're able to enjoy looking at all your fiddling about and questionable color choices. Gameplay. When No Man's Sky released, you wouldn't be wrong in assuming it was an early access or technical demonstration of the game that was promised. While there was a huge number of procedurally generated planets and environments, the concept was still very shallow. After a couple hours, you had done just about everything that No Man's Sky had to offer. The most worthwhile thing you could do at that point was just take a couple of screenshots for your desktop backdrop. Luckily, Hello Games really went to work in adding more for players to do. Base Building Foundation was the first big update that came to No Man's Sky, and introduced base building. It's one of the core concepts of the game today and allows players to find and claim bases on planets that they like. You are able to build a host of different features including farms for resource collection as well as storage. That would help to alleviate the inevitable inventory issues that you'll run into when you're forced to dump out all your cobalt for gold. This would then inevitably lead you to find a ship that would need said cobalt to fix after about 5 minutes. Ugh, every time. In the next update, bases are now able to be built anywhere, and by anywhere I do mean anywhere. On the top of a mountain or under the sea, wherever you think will be the coolest place for your base to be. And if there's some unsightly uneven terrain messing up your dream base, don't sweat it. The new terrain manipulator will take care of that. Bases in general are larger and more complex with a whole mishmash of new parts to use. Now that you can have friends help build your base, no project is too grand in scope. Once you and your buddies are finished, there's only one thing left to do then make a new base. You can now own multiple bases and place teleporters to travel between them. Travel. Teleportation was a highly requested feature in No Man's Sky. For this, you were basically just walking everywhere or flying your spaceship, and it got kind of dull. I signed up for the wonder of space exploration, not the actual tediousness of traveling said galaxy. But with teleportation, now you can just hop into a portal and jump to distant planets instantaneously. Don't want to teleport, but don't want to walk on the planet either. Exocrafts were introduced in the Pathfinder update, and it upgraded you from traveling by foot to land-based vehicles. You could use the vehicles to explore, gather resources, and even test out your driving skills on race circuits. Now with multiplayer, you're able to turn your home planet into a Mario Kart-style racetrack. Nah, just make sure you don't hit any wombat, zebra, moth things. Any alien species is tough to clean out of your Exocraft's grill. Freighters. 
Introduced in the very first Foundation updates, freighters are colossal interstellar starships that work as a sort of floating base. Within the freighters, you can grow plants, store cargo, and keep your very own collection of starships. This becomes quite handy in the Pathfinder update when starship specializations are also introduced. And everyone knows you gotta diversify your portfolio of starships. A guy can always use more ships, which is exactly what the next update brings us, a fleet of frigates. Frigates are these smaller support ships that you can send out on expeditions that play out in real time. And you can have now up to 50 frigates at a time, and the more you have, the better. So keep an eye out for any when you see them floating through space. Game Modes The Foundation and Pathfinder updates introduce the game modes Survival, Creative, and Permadeath. For players that were looking for a more difficult challenge, survival forces you to try to stay alive with limited resources and stronger, more aggressive enemies. And let's not forget those intense environmental hazards. Permadeath is a variation on the mode that will result in permanent death of your character should you die. Self-explanatory, that one. So if you want my advice, don't die. Personally, I like to stick to the creative mode. If you have unlimited health, resources, and you can build whatever you want. It's kind of like Minecraft in space, which makes it better. Multiplayer. In 2014, No Man's Sky was a multiplayer game. Can you run into other people, other players on the game? Yes. But by its release in 2016, it wasn't. There was a bit of a debacle when it launched, as most players went in with the expectation of being able to explore space with their friends. Even though there supposedly was multiplayer, Hello Games said that the chance of two players ever crossing paths in a universe this large is pretty much zero which some people took as a challenge. Reddit user The Galactic Cactus found fellow explorer Cytocat, and by utilizing the wonders of the internet, they both streamed their meeting on Twitch. It became painfully obvious, however, that even though they were standing in the same spot in the same lunar base, they were unable to see each other. In fact, both worlds were almost completely different. One was night and the other was day, and even the things around them moved differently. This incident and a host of other issues had the community retitling the game No Man's Lie. Joint Exploration A year after that incident, No Man's Sky released its third major update, Atlas Rises. With it came the beginnings of a multiplayer. Well, if you can even call what they released multiplayer. The developers stated that interaction with others is currently very limited, and they definitely weren't lying about that. Basically, what the update did was show that if someone was in the same space as you, you're going to be looking at a floating blue orb. Note that you can only be with 16 orbs at a time, or the universe will implode. You wouldn't be able to see the character or their ship, and you can't affect anything in their game. But what you can do is talk to them on voice chat. So, yeah. You can also build a little monument to commemorate you finding your new glowing friend. I mean, my mother always told me not to talk to strangers, but I guess they're not really a stranger if you have a monument together. A true multiplayer. Despite all the controversy, you've got to give it to the team over at Hello Games. They could have walked away from No Man's Sky at any point since its launch, but they've kept at it. Now, two years later, we have a feature that actually resembles multiplayer. No more just talking to lifeless glowing orbs. This is a true multiplayer that allows you to explore space with your friends. In the game's latest update, Next, your glowing orb friends have now been upgraded to real players. Well, only the three that you can choose to team up with, but the rest of the players occupying your spaces are still at least orbs. It's a start. Your friends, now fully corporeal, can help you build all the things. Explore the galaxy, undertake missions, and my personal favorite, reenact the Battle of Endor. All wings reporting in. Now, if you played No Man's Sky at the beginning, you'll remember that this game was pretty light on lore. Well, that's changed, but before we get there, I want to remind you to enter the Leaderboard's ongoing console giveaway by going to leaderboard.nyc slash giveaway. Okay, back to No Man's Sky. The story. Like most open world games, the story generally comes secondary to the world created. It's always more about the journey, the exploration, the helping of random villagers find things they've managed to scatter all over the realm. I know I left Princess Zelda stuck in Hyrule Castle for about a bajillion hours longer than I needed to while lifting up every rock in the kingdom to look for Koroks, but it's still nice to have something that propels the game forward and give it some direction. No Man's Sky launched with a fairly bare bones but promising storyline. A long time ago, an entity known as Atlas created a simulated galaxy. When you awaken on your planet, Atlas sets you on a path to get to the center of the galaxy, the source of mysterious and omnipotent power. I still haven't really figured out what the point of that was, but depending on the path you take when you reach the center of the galaxy, you discover some sort of glitch in the matrix and restart on another galaxy. In the Atlas Rises update, the main storyline gets fleshed out with a whopping 30 hours of new content. 
quite early in the game, you get roped into saving an alien called Artemis. He's part of a race of sentient species known as Travelers. Artemis wants to meet you, but then promptly ghosts you with the whole the world is ending so the comp system doesn't work very well gambit. Yeah, yeah, classic excuse. Unfortunately, you're not one to take a hint as you hunt for him throughout the galaxy. Here's where you get a bit more than what you may be bargained for. It turns out that Atlas, the mega cosmic entity and creator of the universe, was just a computer terminal all along. Now it's dying and the universes are starting to fall apart. The story is a pretty slow burn involving the faltering fabric of the cosmos and is told through sparse bits of dialogue from random NPCs. But in the end, you journey to the center of the universe and have to decide the fate of the galaxy. At this point in the game, it was definitely more story and lore content than anyone had expected from No Man's Sky and there is a solid narrative pull. Where many game updates alter or expand a game's ending, the next update overhauls the introduction. It seems like anytime No Man's Sky does a big update, the best thing for you to do is just restart the game. It's a pain, but the new introductory missions make it well worth it. There are now new mission chains that introduce you to some of the game's more advanced features. And next, missions have expanded into a variety of types from photography, feeding, freighter attacks, defense, archaeology, and even specialized hunting missions, all in an effort to gather those credits, blueprints, and gain some rep from the locals. Indigenous species respect a traveler that repeats quests. No Man's Sky has been drifting through an asteroid belt of negativity since it was first released back in 2016, but you've got to hand it to Hello Games, they are sincerely dedicated to delivering the game that they promised. They've been churning out free patches and updates when they could have easily piled into escape pods and blasted off with the money they made, and they made plenty. I guess No Man's Sky is truly a place where no developer has gone before. If you like this video, check out our Then vs. Now about Overwatch as well as several other series. Once again, I'm Alpha Lance, and thanks for watching No Man's Sky Then vs. Now with The Leaderboard, your home for video game facts.